Jackie Cash and Laurie Kilmartin. This meeting is being recorded. Got it. Hi, Jackie Cation. Hi, Hello. Laurie. Hello. Uh, Laurie Kilmartin. Right. You just flew back from your uh, squeaky clean afternoon gig, if I remember. I, yes. I mean, I was technically clean. I never, you know, it's always so worrisome when they go, they, they start to worry because it's like, I can be swear free, but the topics can be dicey. Still or, adult topics. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a grown up, but it's the Bay yeah. Area. And we're all, you know, anyone who uh, is an, uh, anti abortion in that crowd, sorry, I guess you weren't happy, but you know what? You deserve to be unhappy wherever you go. Oh, everywhere. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right. Left yeah. And center. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, so yeah, it was in San Leandro. I, I flew in in the morning uh, to Oakland, rented a car, drove around Walnut Creek and Pleasant Hill, you know, do my usual nostalgia stops, went to the cemetery, said hello to my parents, and then went to the old house to make sure that they didn't cut down my dad's plum tree, which they didn't. They're maintaining all the trees that my dad planted, so I'm pretty happy about that. That's great. Then... I went swimming at my old, one of my old pools, Heather Farms. Oh, nice. And uh, it's so funny because, uh, not funny, but it, whatever. It, what, it, when I, there's a distinct memory I have of the locker room well, and the, the benches they have, there's these polished wood benches and they're still there from when I was 14 years old. It's the same benches. They're great benches. They're, they look perfect, right? Yeah. But, it's this where's this redheaded swimmer named Jody? I forget her last name, but we were we were talking about Michael Jackson <laughs> and how how fine he was. I remember this conversation because <laughs> uh, uh, what the album had come out where he's just sort of leaning, you know, it was before he had a lot of surgery and he's just leaning back. I forget that it was that rock, it was that off the wall, maybe I forget, but there was a uh, some freshman girlhood crushes happening then and so i was struck with all those memories and then just swimming in the pool is great uh it's, it's such a great pool and nostalgia uh, yeah yeah a lot of nostalgia then uh drove over to san leandro and um i i'm i think yeah i mean i yeah i did it they they liked me they want me back next year Good. so that we may so now i have to write 20 more minutes <laughs> <laughs> that are clean over the next year. Hopefully I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was, it was fun to see Brian. Brian Copeland is a grandfather now, which is like shocking. And I've known him since he's 22. It's so strange. Mm -hmm. And um, Greg Proops was there. I haven't seen Proops in a long time. Proops. It's hilarious. Uh, yeah. 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 So that's and a then, good gig. Yeah. Some people I had were new to me and then uh, Joe Closeth. Do you know Joe? He's, not offhand, but maybe can never okay. tell. Okay, he's very really funny storyteller, San Francisco guy. But he's the guy that was featuring when I was headlining at this triple run, and we it was in Montana, and it was so cold. We pulled into radio. We had to do a, an early morning radio, and we were late, so I ran in er, fast because he was like going to take some time to, I don't know, shut the door, whatever. I I had to be on the radio. <laughs> So I ran in and then he came in, came in about five minutes later with my car door handle in his hand because it had snapped off because it was so cold. Oh, weird. Yeah. Where was this? Montana. Montana. Yeah. Montana gets yeah. cold. Or um, used to. Yeah. And May again. Someone was telling me that uh, uh, they was talk were talking to somebody who couldn't get to sleep because she was thinking about climate change. Oh, that's I me. Like, I think they're talking about me. No, it was somebody in there, one of the youth. Uh, and I was like, what What are you watching before bed? Don't watch anything about the, I mean. Well, it's reading. And Jackie, you're telling me that my interests are the same as young people's, which to me. Congratulations. I, I, well I'd like done. to hear that on my birthday. Thank on you. your birthday. Today's your birthday. Yeah. yeah. Happy birthday. Happy oh, my birthday. God. Yeah. I forgot. What to a way to end it. Mm -hmm. Um. I forgot to, to call any number of people. But I um, I always worry about climate change. That's that's when part two of my day kicks in is at eleven thirty at night after my son's asleep, but I start reading about climate change. Cause a couple uh, you know, when you're on Twitter at like midnight or one AM, you're getting the British 
you know, you're getting European tweets and British and Irish and uh, they talk about it a lot more, you know? Yeah. So. Right, right. Yeah. I shouldn't be on Twitter after 10 p.m. That should be my rule. Because once you when you start getting Europeans who are fresh in the morning, they're just, they're hot. They're ready right. to tweet. Uh-huh. And so you can't stop reading it, you know? Right, right. That, uh, they have so much energy. That's the beginning yeah. of their day. Right. Yeah. I, uh, what did, uh, I had a big week of various fancy stand-up comedy. I just spilled some water. I've also been dropping shit all week. God, I hope I don't get electrocuted in the next 12 seconds. Um, it came kind of on the computer. So let's see. No, it's near Andy's computer. Less positive. Uh, my computer. You're fine. Phew. Ha ha. Right? Is that how marriage works? Ha <laughs> 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 ha. It happened to be you, not me. Oh, spouse. my God. Wait a minute. <laughs> it's uh, just going to try to affect some change at a grassroots level here. Everyone. <laughs> Someone was telling me that there's uh, an OnlyFans. Oh, I know. I did a podcast of like seven uh, news stories this week. Yeah, right. And one of the news stories was about some woman who had an OnlyFans that was just her armpit. And uh, and how she was making good money as I get real close to the camera. You guys got a chance to see my fucking armpit? Nah. Anyway, so, but here's the scoop is then her picture showed up and I was like, no, that's a good looking person, stem to stern. Nobody's looking at her. I mean, and it wasn't even like a money shot of somebody's armpit. Like, you're like, if you like an armpit, that's, you know, that's between you and your God. But this woman was not showing full frontal armpit. She was the arm, the money shot, the armpit money shot would be a picture of the armpit that you want to ejaculate into. I don't know what you want to do with that armpit. That's uh, again, uh, we 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 didn't get any details of what people who really loved armpits want to do to them. Right. But what imagines they want to fuck them? I mean, when you think yeah. about, <laughs> sure, right? Don't you? Think, I mean, if you're thinking sexually about an armpit, you usually think you want to fuck it. Right. I mean, if you close the arm over it, you've made a little vagina, as far <laughs> as I'm concerned. <laughs> Then you're not familiar with what vaginas look like, uh, no. because <laughs> no, if I try not to look uh, beyond below my waist, well, um, it terrifies you know, me. As it should terrify any girl raised Catholic. <laughs> really, you were never encouraged to sit on a mirror and look deeply into your own. Oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! I, I can't imagine. I can't. I don't. I don't know what that life is like. I don't know what those. The mothers of those people are like, like that's how, not, how are nobody's you mother that? is telling them to do that. That's like, well, I mean, possibly, but I I'm mean, sure I, they, I, I no, in, there's a bunch of sex positive moms that are doing that shit all the time, every day. I thought it was, uh, um, I was, there was like a drum circle. I was, it was the nineties. There was somebody talking to me about body positivity and how I should sit on them. I, I was like, well, I don't care enough to, I don't need to see up my own hoo-ha. Um, I'm willing to go through Braille. Yes. <laughs> Let it just get dirtier. Let it get I, red by fingertips. Yeah, I've been, uh, I have a, it isn't a cold. Um, I have something. I took a COVID test. I don't have COVID. That's uh, the good what, news. What COVID test did you take? A home one? Yeah. It doesn't catch a lot of, is like you over? have to be pretty far gone for a home test to catch it. It's still, if you have a ton of symptoms, it could still catch it, but you should probably get a, uh, get one, you know, where they, a PCR where they have to send it in. It takes a day. Right. I'm just, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I don't even have like a, a fever or anything. I just have a stuffed up nose. And Is it still free with your health insurance? The home ones or the PCR? PCR. I don't know. Uh, I could go to Kaiser and find out, I suppose, tomorrow. If it's free, I don't know. I would I would jump on it, you know, just yeah. to make sure. Because if you in my opinion, if you do have COVID, you want it like documented in case you get, you know, long COVID and you know, whatever. 
right so that your insurance will cover it but mm-hmm. if you're i don't know if it's if it's just a i don't know uh, yeah but whatever it is is i'm all over the place um with the mm-hmm. bit of it it's uh um, I don't know what that is, but I'm going to nod as if talking. I do. This is me talking. Oh, I see. Trying to... Oh, doing stand-up. I, yes. I, yeah, I did stand-up. I did. Um, what? Uh, yeah, I had a bunch of sets this week. And then, not sex, I had a bunch of sets. I, uh, I, I heard it right. I know. and But I did. Um, I can't even remember. All I know is I got a last-minute call into the improv, which was kind of fun. Yeah. Even though I was at the 810 spot on Friday. And then somebody said, well, you know, famous people are coming in a minute. And I was like, yeah, I got to go home. And then I looked at the list and I was like, you know, as as famous as Nikki Glaser and Whitney Cummings are, mm-hmm. it's not enough. Uh, I don't know who would have been enough, but it wouldn't have been them. God love them both. I'm happy for them that, and I'm happy that that door person thought that that was going to make me stay. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I just got to do 15 minutes and was handed a sweaty wad of twenties. So I'm going to get the hell out of Dodge here. And, um, uh, understood. I was at the, uh, let's see on Friday. I did a set at the, um, at the long beach lap factory. Right. And, um, that was fun. It was fun. The MC was late, so we I started it. And we just did a tag team, and okay. uh, it was actually kind of fun to kick it off because y- y- I don't know when you're w- when you're hosting or MCing or something, they don't expect like you can be kind of a little more chatty, and then right. you're like you're the friend of the audience, and and then okay. you're going to bring up the comedian. So that was even even though I wasn't hosting, we tag teamed it. That was sort of my comedic stance. Uh, so that was kind of fun, and then uh, and then I did a on the I did a ten o'clock of flappers. Oh, nice! And then you know I had my thing yesterday, um, and then I had you know spots, various spots here and there. We had our show on Thursday night at the. We Crow. did have our show at the Crow, and it was super fun. And um, what a great lineup! Everybody had really really funny sh- sets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was uh, uh, Katie and Danielle and Jasmine, and then you yeah. and I. Yeah, and I will cool. say that my new driving bit um, did okay. Oh, I like night. it. I, I like did, it. Yeah, and then I did it at the Comedy and Magic second show last night. Oh, and because I did both shows at Comedy and Magic for their anniversary. Yeah, and it was actually really fun. It was like Jake Johansson and Matt Kirshen and Kier Sultanovich and Jen Kober and Kirsten Key. Um, it was a really fun hang. Kristen and Key. Kirsten Key. That's what I said. I said, I think I said Kirsten. I meant Kristen. Yeah. Okay. And a um, bunch of other bunch of other comics uh, names escaping, but very very. It was it was really just such a a positive green room. You know? Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, it is. And uh, um, it's nice when it's twenty comics that you're like, oh, I don't mind any of these people, and I like some of them genuinely. <laughs> and even if there is one of those comics that likes to dominate the room, there's so many people there they can't do it. That's also nice. Right. Right. Um. And yeah. then tonight I did Largo. Oh, with Patton, right? With Patton, Mary Lynn, and Dana Gould. Wow, Marilyn that's Reiska. a great show. I know. I I got up and I said, "This lineup feels like 1997 Largo," which means that I'll be stumbling across the street to get a shot and a beer uh, in between oh. sets because I'm a classy <laughs> dame and I drank at Cantor's. <laughs> uh, so, oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I didn't was Largo's Largo was always at the Coronet Theater. No, it was across the street from Cantor's at some uh the darkest, darkest venue in the world, and the food was terrible. Oh, and what's you the, couldn't what's the, see it. Oh, it's not across from Cantor's now. Something else is though. The dime bar is across from Cantor's and Adam Hunter's gig, right? Oh yeah. Oh right. Was I it the, is that, that the same building or venue? Maybe I can't remember, um, but it was almost directly across the street, and it was sort of 
whatever whatever that that bar was repurposed into like two different bars. I think it was made into a couple of businesses. Jackie, we are bringing the local street references to this podcast like no other time, <laughs> I think. <laughs> right, right. This is it. We're we're making it happen. Um it was so tonight my driving bit, which has been fleshed out, did joke machine with Laura House. Um really really did well tonight but i did it right you know like i set up i opened with something that worked i mm -hmm. closed with something that worked i cradled it real nice nice hammock of people know who i am it's gonna be fine and uh. then, plus largo has such sort of a forgiving nature right Where, yeah um they want to hear the premise they don't mind they don't mind me looking at my set. I mean, it's felt very 1997 because I got to look at my set list to go. I forgot those two lines. I can do them now. And then, uh, and then I led myself into a couple other bits. But Mary Lynn, the greatest. She has this really great. Remember that bit she was doing when she when we did a comic of the week a show at uh, Flappers, and she was talking about dating this guy who bought one sandwich to split. Remember that? Yeah. She was she was I like so. it was a weird it was and she was still talking about that guy, but she was talking about um uh she had like the greatest setup about how we live in some sort of post Trump world where you could just lie. <laughs> yeah. And and then she had like two or three examples of it that made me just go, What? the fuck it was so great it was really really fun that's cool yep um uh, I will... was funny yep oh yeah of course um i will i was on so i did a couple old bits from you know yeah. way back in the day but i was like i'm gonna do this bit i used to do knowing glaze domingo where i my son right yeah. it uh, to me it's like so part of my dna like that uh you you could rouse me from a coma and give me the first line I would finish it right <laughs> right I forgot it I started it I'm I'm midway into it I'm like uh oh, my now it's not you know that sometimes your mouth takes over and you're like yeah oh yeah this is a good joke like you literally forget it and your body finishes it for you and you're yep. like thank you my body has also purged it <laughs> and uh and so I just told the audience, I, I don't know where this goes. I'm sorry, but you'll, you can download my album corset <laughs> and not pay for it and listen to it. <laughs> right. Uh, but they forgave me because I had a bunch of other stuff and I was, uh, I was funny about the forgetting it, but you know, I, I was shocked that I forgot that joke. Well, that that's chunk. because cause sometimes if you start a joke, the muscle memory just comes in and then all of a sudden you finish the joke. Remember when I lost the billionaire's line for like a month? And then all of a sudden I was doing my set at, at some show and I, and all of a sudden I found my way back into that street, which led to the billionaires joke again. Yeah. These little um, off streets. We, yeah. we, we create them and then we never drive down them again, but they're waiting for <laughs> us to, to stop right. by. Oh man. Jake Johansson had a great billionaire bit last night. Oh, It, it was, it was just so smart. And you know, it was sort of, I mean, the jokes themselves were great, but the setup was just about how he just couldn't be a billionaire because he'd be happy way before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't need to go all the way. <laughs> right. It was such a funny premise. And um, yeah, and then I've harvested three tomatoes from my garden. Very exciting. A couple of them got where you had to cut off parts where, where bugs were getting involved. Mm -hmm. I recorded a bunch of dork forests. I did a Harry Chapin dork forest with this woman who's 30. <laughs> and I was like, finally, someone talking about a, a guy I know. Cats in the cradle guy, Harry Chapin. Yeah. Right? That's the next yeah. episode. Died in a plane crash, right? Tragically. Car, yeah. car crash. Car crash. Oh, car crash? Just a John regular Denver's the plane crash. John Denver. What? John Denver is the plane crash. There's somebody else that died in a plane crash then. There was somebody from that era that died in a plane crash. You're sure it wasn't Harry Chapin? I am. Was it a car because, crash? Uh, uh, it was a car crash, 1981. 
Um, but we, she was great. And then, uh, then I did a Ron Vi, did a door chorus with Ron Vi. I just saw Ron. He he was at the show yesterday as well. Oh, cool. He did Golden Girls. It was outstanding. Oh, nice. Great episode. And then Joe Wilson, founding founding uh member of the dork forest helped me put the dork forest together first two three years and he has stage four cancer he's living in albany new york and um he talked about essentially what you do when you have stage four cancer to keep your mind off of it and he, he's got a, a vr setup where he can paint because he's an artist you know he's a comic and a, and a filmmaker and an artist you go to vampiremob.com he made out a, a series and then he also has a couple of um, graphic novels but they're it's a very funny it's about uh mafia guys who become vampires and oh, then neat. yeah yeah it's pretty it's pretty great vampiremob.com anyway so did that and then um my my special the tiny special which how special is it? it's 10 minutes of me i love it it's so good and it's, it's so cute it's really great thank you i appreciate yeah. that but uh jake over at comedy bureau wrote a really nice review mm -hmm. about it nice oh cool yeah it was cool, cool. really unsolicited kind of thing and uh so i was like oh i should probably ask someone if they want to write a thing about it yeah and so i asked the guy over at cracked who i did the comics comic interview i was yeah. like not to tell you what to write about, but you want to look at this? Me telling jokes into the ass camera of a Mazda for 10 minutes? You want to write a review of that? And that was just on Friday, so I've not heard back. And I may never. Ah. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, it's it's very well done. Really funny. And you look thank great. You. Oh, yeah. good. Oh, thank yeah. you. It's, mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's very silly i gotta i get to i this week i get to clip it out because i think i have one more i have a meeting tomorrow two hours to learn how to do instagram and again didn't you just have a two-hour meeting yeah yeah i guess i paid for lots of meetings and i'm gonna learn how to do it and andy was like you go in thinking it's gonna stress you out why don't you go in thinking i'm gonna learn things and it's gonna help and i was like oh, okay all right I uh I have been waiting for myself to enjoy uh, <laughs> reels, making reels, and I'm still waiting, Jackie. I'm still <laughs> on tenter hooks, hoping <laughs> the joy kicks in. I just uh, I don't know, yeah. like I don't know, I don't know what's gonna, you know, what works for uh, some comics. Is it gonna work for me? I don't know. I, I, I you can't it tell. Seems, yeah. So. Whatever. All I know I is that this week at Comic Con, with the strike happening, because now oh, my, now my yeah. union is on strike. Yeah, your union has been on strike, and now your second union is on strike. Yeah. Um, but so all of my all, all of my panelists had to cancel because they're not going to be promoting union shows. So they aren't going down there. Yeah. So no Mary Mac, no Aparna Nancherla, no Maria Bamford. And so I think I'm just going to work on some stand up. I might do have people come up and tell me what their dorkdoms are. If Andy, if Andy uh, ends up coming on Thursday, which I think mm -hmm. he's going to with me, uh, he's going to sort of gamify the audience where they fill out what their dorkdom is. And then I read it on the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's we'll, cool. That'll be fun. Everyone will get to tell me their dorkdom and that'll be neat. Yeah, I love it. Um, I, uh, okay. My son today, he prepared New York, uh, cut steak for your for birthday. Me. Yeah. So yeah, he made steak and potatoes and Brussels nice. sprouts. Yeah. Nice. Steak was great. Good. Potatoes were great. I was so full, uh, a little too full to enjoy the Brussels sprouts, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was great. <laughs> That's the order in which you ate them. What are you, a child? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> the Brussels sprouts were a little uh, overly greasy from okay. being sauteed too much. Like I, but I, you don't want to criticize on a birthday dinner. But I was oh like, no, 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 and yeah. and I love the effort. That was amazing. I love it. Yeah, he he watched some YouTube videos on you know how to prepare this particular kind of cut, 
and uh, whatever recipe he picked, it was delicious. Um, I, uh, I'm really getting into repairing things, Jackie. Okay. Hey, Tyson, nobody cares. Okay. Uh, yes, I care about you so, repairing things. What are you repairing? So I have a hamper. It's a plastic hamper by yeah. Sterilite. I'm sure everyone, half of our listeners have the same hamper. You get it at a Bed Bath & Beyond, all right? Okay. It's white. Bed Bath & Beyond little... is gone. Bed Bath & Beyond is gone the way. Already? Is it yeah. gone already? Yeah. Are you sure? To my knowledge, okay. they, 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 they went under. Or they called Well, they went. did things. they go bankrupt or did they? I mean, you could still be open and bankrupt. True that, true that. But I don't know. Who cares? So, There's so it's point. a plastic hamper. It's, it's yeah it's like that hard plastic you know that a lot of uh a lot of things are made of like uh uh whatever who cares it's plastic we all we're familiar <laughs> right, we all know what it is so it's got these little plastic wheels and they broke over over time you know they don't so now instead of rolling the hamper i'm dragging it okay and i'm getting tired of that so it's like i don't but i don't want to get a new hamper because uh, I don't want this to go in a landfill. I just don't want to be part of, you know, try not to be the person that just constantly just throws shit away and gets new or whatever, even yeah. though it's only 24 bucks. So I emailed Sterilite <laughs> and I said, really? Hey, I, I go into your hampers and uh, I got <laughs> this model and the little, the plastic's the broken, the wheels are broken and I sent pics and they're going to send me new wheels. Oh, there you go. Hey. For free. And then Jackie, okay, so I have a Ninja blender that I've used uh, seven times since I bought it in 2014. Um, <laughs> it's just so big and cumbersome. Yeah. Uh, so, but I, but a, a couple of days ago, I was like, it's smoothie weather. That's it. I'm having a smoothie. And once I decided, I was so excited for my smoothie. So I, I get the Ninja out. I put all the ingredients in. You know, what banana, are the ingredients? There you blueberries. Go. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, banana, blueberries, peanut butter, and milk. Oh wow! Okay, oh, I right. get it all in there. I put it in. I adjust the blender, and then it's not working. Oh no! So then I'm like, oh. So I try every. I do all the troubleshooting on the manual. Still mm -hmm. not happening. Mm -hmm. I call. Um, I call Ninja. Right. They have a customer service number. The person gets on the phone with me, and he uses my camera to guide me to try these different things. It doesn't work. They're sending me a new base. Now I had to pay a little bit, but way less than I had. I bought a brand new Ninja and this one is nine years old. So, and did you get to uh, eat your smoothie? Like, did you just no, stir it with a I'm spoon? Still, no, I'm still thinking of the waste of the food. Uh, I had so to it's just, just it sitting. Out. Oh, you had to dump it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. I didn't just let it sit there. I thought you'd put it in the fridge or something. I don't know. Or just take no. a mortar and pestle and just start. Yeah. No. I mean, you know, that's yeah. how they made smoothies back in the old days. They just beat up a couple of vegetables and some peanut butter. Well, this one ha was all over blades because I, you know, the blade was inside and all that stuff. So, uh, oh. yeah. So it wasted food and my heart was broken because, yeah. you know, when you decide you're going to have a smoothie and you're, then your body gets all excited for cold deliciousness and it doesn't happen. And all I had, my only other option was toast. I was like, oh, not what I wanted. Um. Today, yes, I so I went to my friend Cheryl's house with all my because I'm I right, I have my pilot idea and it's coming along great, by the way. Good. It's gonna be really funny. Um, but it's like it's like it's like the British Empire, it's just far flung, you know, ideas yeah. everywhere. 10 documents called the same title, oh, same right. 10 final drafts with the, almost the same exact title or v2 v3 you know and i'm like where are the scenes i don't know where anything is it's like too much it's like right, a garage yeah. full of shit and you have yep. to go through all of it so mm -hmm. i've just it's so cheryl is like helping me Consolidate organize it, it. okay and figure it out and 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 uh she's like no put that scene first i'm like oh okay great and uh, yeah. so we did a lot of work today and i feel much more clear-headed about it and i'm pretty i'm pretty happy like it and I feel like everything's under one umbrella right now instead of yeah. in 50 different documents on seven different computers, you right. know, whatever. Yeah. So uh, that was my, good. My, uh, my fancy printer that we bought just three years ago, four years ago, um, 
diffuser error, HP, whatever, whatever, scanner, printer, fa like the fanciest $600 computer uh, printer in the world or whatever. Oh. I actually don't know, but I know it was very expensive. It's a um, color printer, right? Right. And then because yeah. Andy also has to, he has got to make prototypes and stuff for games and stuff on it. And so we also have probably $300 worth of cartridges, in cartridges. And so it doesn't work. We are currently using uh, Chris's, Andy's mom's, $35 black and white. And um, it's working okay. It actually has some sort of problems. But um, the, uh, so I try to, I go to HP to buy, this is an entirely... <laughs> uh fixing things with jackie and Lori, you guys uh, so i go to i go to hp.com yeah. to buy a new fuser it's uh -huh. no longer available so i have to buy a refurb or or something that was pulled andrew solomson assures me that it's brand new if it was pulled uh i had to buy it on ebay so i i bought a new sort of thing that i'm going to swap out in my in my giant printer and if it can't work, I got to hire a guy to swap it out. And um, because I and I watched a YouTube video of how to do it. But I would like to watch like at least two or three more <laughs> before. I you do know, it. I hate to be critical of people that go to the shovel to make YouTube videos to show you how to do things. But could they get to the fucking point a little bit? <laughs> oh, right, right. You yeah. Guys, I, I, and for some reason, there's no skip, skip. Skip. No. there's no 30 second jump like there is in podcasts no it's so. just it's it's uh it's it's it you guys it's a fascinating episode of the jackie and laurie <laughs> show let's take a quick break and we'll be right back we're back and um comic of the week yeah this is how i'm finishing my birthday is our podcast i hope yeah. people appreciate our commitment to churning this shit out every monday I know it's amazing that it's your birthday. It's uh, congratulations on having a birthday. Oh, it's not congratulations. I mean, <laughs> I'm still alive. Yay! Right? I'm pretty happy about that. Yep. Uh, I have friends that aren't, and uh, enemies that also aren't, but they had it coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's you? Who's your comic of the week? You just worked. Oh, comic of the week. We just worked together at the uh, Comedy in the Park at San Leandro, and um, her name is Kate uh, Robards, and uh, <laughs> she's also, she's very funny, uh, her set was really funny, and then I was, like, looking her up, and she's, like, a playwright, and she's, all this extra stuff, how dare you, how dare right. you be multi-talented, so enough of that, but uh, she, I think she lives in New York, but she was out here for whatever, a few things. Um, okay. and, uh, yeah, very funny. I liked her a lot. Very nice. She looks so much like my sister that it was jarring. I didn't tell her that because no, one, no there's no nothing. One needs to, she doesn't no one know, needs to know. No. It, and, uh, it's, I don't know when, if someone says you look like a relative to your, you're like, well, what, what do you mean? What, what do you do with that information? <laughs> People tell me all the time that I, that I, that I look like someone they work with or that I remind yeah. them of their aunt or right. It used to be yeah. their college roommate, but those days are over <laughs> and uh, so be it. But yeah, uh, yeah it's, you're right. Yeah, you so were right great. to do that. So what's her handle? Uh, her Instagram is uh, at Kate Robards, R-O-B-A-R-D-S, Kate with a K. Okay, I think we all got it. We all got it. All right. Well, good for us. Um, yeah. So she's great. Find her, book her, make it part of mm -hmm. your, your life. Yeah. So this week, are you going to Acme this week? I'm leaving on Tuesday. The show, the week starts on Wednesday. Taking okay. American Airlines. I did you I did get an American Airlines credit card, so I'm not being charged for the luggage. I know that was your next question. Thank you. Um, for, <laughs> for checked luggage. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm working with Tony Kameen. Oh, oh, that's awesome that he's coming. I to. know. Yeah, I don't know I, I, how he's uh, doing it. Do you know how he's doing it? Yeah, I don't know how he's doing it. I don't know if he's staying with somebody or whatever. But he he said if you don't have the feature, just let me know. And he jumped in and, and called Lewis. And uh, so here's that's the thing: awesome. I love I love meeting new comics. Yeah. Sometimes I'm the only comic of my era on a show, or often uh, actually, and it sometimes can be a little lonely. 
Yeah. Because you just. The road is you lonely. Know, it's nice to bring a friend or someone you like. Right. And it's also nice to be around someone with the same sort of uh, attitude towards comedy, maybe, as mm -hmm. opposed to like the unbridled optimism. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I'm know like that. Oh, so you're saying year old? so Tony Cabine also a sad sack is what you're telling me. No, he's actually very optimistic, but it's 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 probably it's rooted in realism and not what you <laughs> hope will happen. It's uh he's got the good jade. He's jaded and uh it, yes, it, you can good jade. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I will say that. Um, I'm going in two days early to the act to Acme for my September week, mm -hmm. and because they there's some panel at Augsburg or some college in Minneapolis on Tuesday, just a mid afternoon. You know, ask me if I have an opinion. It I do. I do have an opinion. Do I know it, about anything? It doesn't even matter what it is. What do you think the best paper towel brand is, Jackie? And I'll be like, I don't know, Scott, Brawny. What do you and talk? Why you're talking about paper towels right now? I'm talking about paper towels now because uh, someone has asked me to come in a day early, and I said, "Well, will you cover the hotel? Because I will come in a day early because it will give me an extra, essentially, two days to hang out with my family, yeah, uh, and my friends from Minneapolis." And so, talk about a nostalgia drive around. And, um, and so I'm going to go in, I'm going to do the afternoon thing. And then starting on Wednesday is when the gig starts, uh, Wednesday mm -hmm. through Saturday and both, uh, Anna Valenzuela and Carmen Morales are coming. Good show. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a nice. hell of a show and, um, yeah. And it's, it's going to be super, I'm really, where, I'm, where are they staying? Well, Carmen says she knows some people. And Carmen so, always knows people. Carmen, Carmen knows has, more people than I've ever met. Carmen has people in every e large city and also mid-level city in the United States. Yes. You, she could even go to Spain. She could go, she could go yeah. anywhere. Australia. Yeah. She could go anywhere and find all of a sudden she's Housing. staying in somebody's yes. yeah, she's staying in somebody's yeah. couch or some damn thing. But uh yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to mic drop this weekend. I'm um I'm sorry about the whole Dork Forest thing, but Friday and Saturday, four shows. I don't know who I'm working with there as they're they're covering it, I guess. And um I really hope I really hope they like me enough to have me back, you know? Like PJ gets me into these clubs and then it's like they're either newly opened or they're they're like it's I'm there one time and then I'm like, Well, am I working there again? And and I get no no there's no reason not to book me again. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing great. There should, should all work. <laughs> so I just, I'm living in hope <sighs> that, that I do well at mic drop this weekend so that, um, so that it goes well. So. Jackie, it's hard getting work. I mean, I'm talking to established comics that I thought would be no brainer, have 52 weeks of, of, of work a year. And they, they are also, it's hard. It's hard to get club work you know Patton told me that he's getting call uh he talked to his agent and his agent who reps a lot of comics who are also actors because of the strike they're all looking yeah. for work and i it's, as i said to Patton, i said oh they're all working the chains i don't work though so they're not grinding it out uh yeah but that puts out the comics that would also be working those chains now they come to the clubs that you do work I know it's hard. It's, it's, it's going to be hard. I, it's going to be hard. Yeah. I got to, I got to sell the show. <laughs> I, I, this can't be my primary income. It just, it, it, it's not, it's not cutting it remotely. Right. Yeah. It's a road to hoe. And, um, did you just call me a road hoe? Yeah. You're well, um, I could call you a road hope when you'd be like, <laughs> oh, I aspire. Uh, so there's nothing more uh, dependable than a, a guitar comic. That's what I have to say to that. Um, oh, yeah. Somebody was 
oh yeah, someone's asking us about a guitar comic. And we were like, people love guitars and they love songs. And uh, I'm sure they'll be pleased. Kristen, <laughs> Key, Kristen Key had her guitar doing the five minute set at Comedy She's and funny. Magic. She yes. is funny. There's a whole new world of guitar comics that are funny. It's uh, Morgan, it Morgan just... Jay. Morgan Jay is very funny as well. Okay. Yeah. It used to just be Henry Phillips. That was it. Oh, right. And, right, right, uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's he's the old school version of the funny guitar comic. I'm Henry sure there is... were others, but. Uh, no, he's so young. Henry. No, he's got, what, five years younger than we are? If I don't know. He, he yeah. just always seems very young to me. Oh my so God. I can't he, believe he's. He used to school. do this joke about how his girlfriend, they were having sex, and she said, you know what I like? I like it when people do this one thing. And he goes, people? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it makes me laugh. I still say it to Andy when we're when we're doing the whatever. And I say, you know, I like it when people do. And it makes him laugh every time. Um. So uh, I did a trial run with my son to take the bus to his work. He has a part-time job. And uh, so we did that. It's, you know, oh. taking the bus in Los Angeles uh, is uh, no easy feat. Uh, it never no, you goes. you switch a lot of. So yeah, it doesn't several... go where How you many want buses? it to exactly. It's actually just one bus. It's just oh, getting to the bus stops both on both sides of it. But it's like, uh, you know, it's not like New York where you just walk outside your your apartment and there's a bus a bus stop that with you know 17 different lines of stop by you know like you gotta right you gotta public transportation is not good in uh in los angeles I, knows I would say that it's not not good i would say that los angeles is so large that it's yeah. just a bigger chore but i know like my buddy jim wooster takes the bus all the time and he lives in oh, Silver really? lake and works in van nuys and I, I, as I like to say to him regularly, you have a car. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, but I like to read on the bus. And I also don't like yeah. to use a lot of gas. So. I mean, yeah, the, it's a great place to read. Uh, it's just, uh, if, if it's dependable, then you're in good shape. Uh, last night I flew into LAX, you know, uh, because uh, the, the flight to Burbank was too close Prohib to showtime. Prohibitively. And yes. And so uh, I, 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 my heart tried to take the fly away, but then I was like, oh, that, <laughs> the lift would be so much faster. It's so late. I don't want to, I got to fly away to downtown LA and then take a train to Universal and then an Uber, whatever. So it costs more than I wanted it to, but you know, I might, my resolution to public transit gets weaker as the night goes on. Yes, the later it goes, the more you're like, I would just like to get home and I just want to be home, to live defensively for the next yes. hour and a half. Yeah, so, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> that, uh, yeah, I, um, I, I just picked up, I just picked up some work with Maria that I'm pretty psyched about, um, because she was, you know. Essentially, all I'm doing now is going through her tour dates and Brian Regan's tour dates and going, hey, I have some empty weeks. You guys have any interest in me? I got frequent flyer miles. <laughs> I got I got Hilton nice. Hours points. I got something. Is there anything? So I'm going to do Philly and Pittsburgh and Chicago with Maria. I need a comedy sugar daddy, you know? Yeah. You Someone need I can go through the calendar. And say, hey. I'm surprised. I am surprised. Burt Kreischer likes both of us, and he just did that fully loaded thing where he brought a bunch mm -hmm. of dudes and a couple of women. But mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes you ever have you ever thought this, Lori? I wish I golfed just for work. Yes, I mean, I, since remember that? Uh, the early Kathleen Madigan days, I was right. like, uh, she knows what she's doing. She's bringing golf clubs with her on the road. Right. Club owners love to golf. I don't know why it. And now, and now there's like, like, I know Rory Scoble and Chad and Bert and all of those guys all golf and it's such a weird sport, but they, they do it and they, and it's camaraderie and they kind of, you know. Yeah. Um, could I just do a set and not have to take up a second sport to <laughs> perform? I mean, I, I already got to put shit on reels all the time. Now I got to learn to golf. I can't oh, I do know. it. I know. I, I'm going to clip out 
looking back this week and yeah. it's only 10 minutes. Why clip it out? Right. But I did have Kyle export it in the good nine by 16. So it'll, it'll look even better in on some uh, ways. That's the superior cut, superior cut. You mm. guys look forward to it. Go to JackieCasher.com. You can see my new website. I put out a second mass email to sort of encourage people to come to the crow. Yeah. And to encourage people to come to mic drop. And so I'm going through MailChimp and there's a way to remove the unsubscribe button. And I almost did it. And then I was like, <laughs> don't be a dick. Let people unsubscribe. And so I just, I just tightened it up the whole block yeah. and four people unsubscribed, whatever. I mean, <laughs> it's fine. It's, I mean, the th if, if people, I know that I sometimes go through my emails and if I get two in a week or three in a week, I will unsubscribe and then resubscribe later or I'll see them on some other type of event, but I can't, it felt like a lot and I didn't yeah. really have, like there wasn't like an anecdote and it had been four days. It felt like a, a, a real tight turnaround. Uh, speaking of which, let's take a quick break and then come back. You guys were back. Jackie, another thing I did in my right. DIY life. Okay, so I, I really love the sound of a fountain, you oh, know? Yeah. So uh, I was on Wayfair, and there's a fountain. I was like, oh, this is, this is a nice one. Because fountain, like, a really, like, a fountain could be, like, $1,000, you yeah. know? Those, like, what? concrete ones, right? That can't so be. That, I'm just so kidding. it was, like, yeah. So um, 300 bucks, and I was like, ah. Oh. So I, I ordered it, and then an hour later, I was like, I can't. So I unordered it. And Wayfair was like, it's, well, it's too late. We were already sending it. And it was, by the way, it's the 4th of July. I'm like, I know you motherfuckers don't have somebody working and <laughs> loading a fountain immediately. And uh, so that's been an ordeal, but they're they're going to be picking it up tomorrow. But I decided, because I went on YouTube, and I was like, how do you make your own fountain? Because you just need a pump, basically. Yeah. And this guy, this guy had a little video. So I ordered the pump that he, he had, it was like 30 bucks. And, um, I don't know if you could see it. Should I show it to you guys? It's, yeah, can it's... you, are you seeing it? Oh yeah. Oh, it's just in the house. No, it's, well, it's on the porch. Oh, you're but on it's the like, porch? Ooh. I just, yeah, I just put it inside a, uh, a big, big container that I got from Conan a long time ago. Like someone had sent, uh, like a, like a, a party, you know, like uh, cupcakes or booze or something like that. And so there's this, ju just this large container, a metal container. Uh, I don't, I'm not looking at the word bucket, but it's something like that. Right. Okay. It kinda, and and yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I just kept it around cause it's cool looking. And uh, so I just, uh, I put it together. It's pretty easy. And I got the nice fountain sound that I like. Yep. It makes you feel cooler when you hear the fountain sound, even if you're not in the water. So okay. I got it. And so, so that was $30 instead of 300. So Jackie, I'm saving money every time I turn around, <laughs> I'm saving money. Right. Right. I, uh, uh, we're going to have to get our trees trimmed. Um, and it was more expensive than I, I was going to ask you if you had an arborist. Did I ask you? You did. And I don't, but, okay. uh, I do need one. Cause my trees have, uh, I, gone, here's the thing. Yeah. I, they're wild and I love it. Like two, there's like two trees are like fighting each other. They're competitive and they're reaching for the sun and they have, they're inspiring each other to grow really big. Right. right? The, uh, the Palos Verde and the Jacaranda, they're like, they're like, they're, da they're battling it out. Right. right? Up, up top. Andy would say, kill the Palos Verde. No. Uh, I, we have a Chinese elm and a Jacaranda that are fighting each other. And Andy planted that Jacaranda and he's like, Fuck that Chinese help. Fuck it. And uh, I was like, stop. That's a perfectly yeah. nice tree. He's like, it's only shading the alley. And I said, people like shade in the alley. There's no yeah, reason. It, it'll still lower the temp. I'm saying you're planting trees now. You're preparing for climate change in 15 years. That's why like, I, I tree it up. Now, I may have gone a little crazy in the little part of the backyard and put, because I did have an arborist stop by and he's like, there's too many trees here. There, <laughs> and I was like, how dare you? There's not enough trees anyway. 
but uh so uh so now so yes the tree the place i went to the nursery i went to sold me too many trees i was like i want i have this amount of space and uh he's like they should have been six feet apart not three feet apart and whatever okay so yeah. i should probably have a couple of those those trees cut down but uh i hate it i i love shade I, and it's so much cooler you know i i i, I want the whole house covered with uh branches and i don't care if it's a, a risk i want it all covered well you know uh during i think it was two years ago maybe a year ago when the the fires and the winds came down from yeah the, the angeles forest a uh, big uh big tree fell on uh maria's house yeah was and she in it no nope, i don't think anyone was in it at the time that was the good news but they had a they had to get that fixed Ooh. they have giant trees all around them which is beautiful and yet oh, slightly dangerous and mine aren't giant and they're they're newish the so you know yeah it'll take a couple of years before you're in danger it'll fall on the next uh, <clears throat> occupants and, and kill them not me that's what i say <laughs> uh i what else do i want out of life here i think the the next gig i'm doing after san diego is phoenix and hey. uh Tom Which, the uh, oh Star yeah Tracer. yeah i'm there yeah. in january are you? you're in phoenix in the summer oh jackie it's that's 116 what, there this week this week it was 116 that's when i like to go when we're closest to the sun oh uh it just reminds me of kuwait <laughs> back in 20 2005 sure. you know when i was in the gulf war um yeah i was in, I the, was gulf in the gulf war, war as well as adjacent, well i'm a adjacent. i'm a vet i'm a vet i'm a, I'm a comedy uh okay so my dad uh so you know i have merch with my dad's face on i got a t-shirt yeah. with a bunch of his sayings i have a challenge coin speaking of the military uh with his face on it that says never say no without a number he, i gave him 10 of them when they like a year oh, ago or something mm -hmm. he just he calls me he's like you know i lost the last one of that no he didn't he sold the last one of them He's selling your merch. I He's love He's selling it. my merch with his face on it. He's a true Cation. So he is the OG. And so <laughs> I said, I'll send you. He said, just send me another one. And so I sent him 10 more. And he called me two days after he got him. And he said, I sold the first one for a hundred bucks. <laughs> and I said, what? He goes, I know I was willing to haggle. I told the guy it'd be a hundred dollars. The guy didn't haggle. He just gave me a hundred dollars. And I said, well, congratulations, Potawatomi Casino. Is he approaching people at the store? Like how's your dad had access to people? He approaches people in every, every single <laughs> thing, like oh any, everywhere. Wow. He, he's constantly talking to women. And it's mostly women he's talking to, but if he does have a waiter, he'll like to show them, you know. He so he'll I'm he'll try to sell a challenge coin to the server at a restaurant. He won't try to. He'll just show <laughs> it to them, and then they'll if they ask, "Well, where did you get it? What? How much is it?" I don't. And, you it, to see Elliot okay. in his zone. Yeah, is kind I of. Mean, a delight a it's embarrassing as a child yeah and as a <laughs> daughter but it is there's a there's it certainly has a gift i am uh i'm going in august because he always thinks he's gonna die in january in july and august mm -hmm. and i always go near the end of august because i'm like stick it out dad uh and we're gonna go to um when i was home remember carmen morales was doing the kenosha comedy club uh -huh. by the way the kenosha comedy club mary max says it's great too Mary Mac oh, so, and Carmen yeah. have both done it. I'm 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 willing and excited. You're available. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh but the uh um uh, but driving back from the Kenosha Comedy Club just when we had my dad, Carmen and I had dinner in Kenosha with Carmen. And uh we're driving back through Racine and on Lake Michigan there is a, a restaurant called the Hobnob, H O B N O B hobnob and my dad was so excited he was like we used to go there after we went to the track to sort of settle up with everybody and it looks like it looks like one of those 60s it has all that 60s architecture yeah, you have talked about the hobnob 
Okay, so we're going to go to the Hobnob at the end of August is what I'm going to go in. Everybody's going to come into town. We're all going to go to the Hobnob. Hobbing it up. I love we'll it. Knob it up. We're going to hobnob it up. Um, my my grandfather used to, my grandfather was a salesman as well. Okay. And he sold uh, feminine hygiene products at one <laughs> point in his life. And okay. he had salesmen come to the house and he asked, he told my mom to come down and tell them how much she liked their pads. <laughs> she was mortified, by the way. That's not her personality whatsoever. And I don't think it's any 12 year old girl's personality really no but that's what he did yeah and uh i'm just trying to con- tie my family members to your dad i did have that great uncle who i never met of course because he shot himself on the banks of the uh <laughs> the river the hudson river in albany okay but he won and lost over two million dollars in his lifetime before he lost oh, his there life you go. okay yeah. before he called it I am mm-hmm. watching so many television shows right now. Uh, I bought a year's worth of Peacock because I thought that we'd be able to watch the Women's World Cup, the only sport Andy's interested in, soccer, mm-hmm. uh, on Peacock. We cannot. I should have bought something else. Oh. But so I I'm, I'm, was going through Peacock, and I found a show called Poker Face. Oh, is that to Natasha Leone? I believe so. And Yeah, she... I haven't seen it. It's essentially, do you remember the show in the 70s called Kung Fu, where he'd go town to town and help people? <laughs> do you remember the show oh, with Michael David. Landon where he was an angel? Oh, David Touched Carradine? by an Angel. Yeah, he'd go town yeah. to town and he'd help people. Do you remember the Hulk from the late 70s? Poker Face, she she goes town to town. And uh, oh, yeah, she is, she is the Hulk. She could tell if people are lying and... um. She's a delight. Uh, so Dana Gould recommended a show that's on Netflix called Old Henry. It's a Western with oh, yeah. the guy from Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Who kept saying, we thought you was a toad. Remember that guy? <laughs> from, oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Barely. He's the star of Old Henry. And, uh, um, and him... Dana Gould and Aldrin have both told me that the the new uh, Stranger uh, uh, Stranger the, Things no the planet uh, the new Star Trek oh Strange New Worlds Strange New World is the best Star Trek in the world right now so there's a lot of great television is that out on, there is what I'm saying Paramount is that Plus, on Disney Paramount mm-hmm. I'm watching Secret okay. Invasion on Disney uh, that's pretty amazing here's what we all have to remember Nick Fury is never going to lie to you. If he says something and you think he's kidding, he's not kidding. Anyway, is Nick Fury a character or Nick Fury is the Samuel Samuel Jackson character? Okay. Um, well, thanks for that warning. Uh, I would hate to <laughs> think incorrectly of a character I'm not familiar with. So thank you, Jackie. Right. Uh, there- I'm watching the bear. We're watching the bear. The bear's supposed to be great. It's very good. Uh, very, very good. In fact, one of the last week of the WB, they had an HBCU like reunion where they had uh, a ton of like either writers and actors that have been to uh, uh, attended historically by colleges, universities. And uh, Alex O'Keefe, who's one of the writers of The Bear, took the mic and was talking. It was cool. It was very inspiring, you know, about uh, basically fucking over, you know, the system as it is, is just incredibly corrupt and uh weighted against you know writers of color uh yeah especially so it was yeah. really good uh i think it was Patton told me tonight that um it might have been barbie and it might have been something else i can't remember he couldn't he couldn't remember but one of when when the sag strike strike started there was a yeah. red carpet press affair happening and uh, all this uh, uh, oppenheimer it was Oppenheimer. Okay. Yeah. They Kill- just got Killian up and Mur- Yeah. There was there was a bunch of people, uh, like you know, on Twitter, memeing uh, Killian Murphy leaving. It was just it was whatever the meme was. They were fleeing. They were doing flip flops and somersaults <laughs> to leave something. He hates doing publicity. He hates being famous. So the fact that he was able to just leave and not talk was apparently yep. made him happy. And if he's happy, then I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. I say I say it too. I think we're real close here, Kyle. You think oh, we're what, done. Two or three? No, he already said we're an done hour. Done. Oh Christ. 